Now, we want to turn our attention to hurling because... Well, it's been a pretty interesting week off the field and it's going to be an even more interesting week over the uh, next while as we finally get to grips with who is going to be in charge of the various counties. I'm delighted to say James Scahill is back with us. James, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, Joe. How's it going? It's very, very interesting off-season so far um, and the, the dominoes started to fall particularly when Liam Cahill decided to stay where he was which I have to say I was very surprised by because it, it looked like it had all yeah. been set up for him to go back to Tipperary and when he made the decision not to go back tip, that was like, OK, right, that's very interesting. So Colin Bonner is officially now the, the Tipperary boss as well. What do you make of those appointments and, and those decisions? What does it suggest yeah. to you? Um, I, first of all, I was, like, I was very surprised by, by Liam Cahill and Shana Watford. Um, you know, I was on the show a few weeks back saying that, you know, the role has kind of had opened up from now and now that he was his time after having gained such experience in Watford. And I was talking to a Tipperary player um, a couple of weeks ago um, and he was kind of saying that they were sort of half expecting, you know, Liam Cattle to come to come on board and just transfer over from Watford. And, and you know, when I heard the decision about, it, I, yes, I was surprised like everybody else. I, I I thought there was probably a five percent chance of him staying in Watford. I thought ninety five percent he'd definitely come over to Tip come home. Um, but I I really respected his decision. I thought that it was a great show of, you know, um, I suppose support to the players that was there and that he wants to stay with them. And then when you think about it a bit deeper, like he's going to have. You know, he's going to have Park Mahoney and Stephen O'Keefe uh, probably and, and Ty Deborka back next year. So he's essentially getting three, you know, he's essentially getting three All-Stars back, which like in soccer terms is like getting three new transfers, you know, into, into a team that's, that's, that's already competed against Limerick, <clears throat> you know, pretty well in the semi-final for, for last periods. So, so I'd say he's looking at the Walford position and going, you know, they're probably best position to take on Limerick, <clears throat> especially when they get back the, the couple of All-Stars. So, um, and what that created then when, when Liam stayed in Watford, it kind of created a bit of, you know, for, for all those neutrals, a bit of a hysterics, like who's going to take over the tip job? And then obviously, the Darry can start to get touted, get it kind of, I suppose, touted about. And then when he took over the Wexford job, that just threw the whole lot into into disarray, you could say. Um, so I'd say the Colin Bonner appointment, um, I wouldn't call it you know, a flashy appointment. It's not a huge appointment. Like what he, what he does bring is the extensive, extensive experience. And like he brings, obviously, he's dealt with Watford with Fitzgibbons, he's dealt with Belly Hale. You know, Ireland winning championships like he's he's dealt with, with Carlo and trying to bring them up levels in divisions of league. Um, so like he's not lacking for experience. Um, and like I didn't actually realise when I read up more about him over the last couple of days that he's got he's he's got massive ex- academic um, uh, qualifications also with, with numerous areas in SNC and management and whatnot. So I think it's it's a pretty you know it's it's a it's a safe appointment from Tipperary. Um, probably it's a good one that they, that they went in house. I, I didn't expect him to go out of house. You know and Coupled that with the Brendan Cummins um, manage, appointment at under 20, it kind of it shouts to me like that it could be an element of natural succession in the three years. You know that Brendan could, you know, go up into senior a bit like what um, I know it's not hot, not hot topic at the minute, but what Stephen Kinney did with the Mick McCarthy appointment. You know. Yeah, I mean that seemed to make sense at the time. I think it still makes sense. Uh, it, it's interesting that you bring that up, but the the uh, the Bonner appointment, I suppose it wasn't a big splashy appointment because it wasn't one of the names that we had kind of from six weeks ago mm-hmm. gone here's an obvious candidate but when you start to point it out like what the track record is what the experience is yep. the level of success that he's had and I think particularly important it's, it's great that you have intercounty success but it seems more and more important that you actually have Sigerson success because that means you can speak to younger athletes you have a, a, a proper understanding of the requirements of the work-life balance and, and the pressure that those kids are coming under to play for their counties, to go training with their counties, to fit that in and then also manage, um, you know, different different styles that they're coming to. That speaks to me of somebody who uh, is perfectly positioned for a team that is transitioning a bit. Yeah, I, you, you made some great points and like you probably, you've articulated it better than <clears throat> the way I would, I would have thought about it and yeah, I fully agree with you because like when he's coming into a management role, let's say, to a team, first of all, that that you know, to be honest, they come off the back of a disappointed season, but there, there is a dressing room there of proven winners. They're, they're talking much more winners in that dressing room, so when he comes in, he's going to have to manage that. And I think the team themselves, like, we know it's not a flashy appointment, but for, for a manager, it's either respect, he's either respected or he's liked. And, you know, I'd much prefer a manager to be respected coming in. And when you look at his track record over the last number of years, you can't but respect him because he's, he's done it at most levels in the sense that he's done it at a third level, he's done it at a club, and he's done it at a county. Like, so he's had a you know, a broad range of, of, of players over the course of his career going back, you know, 20 odd years this stage now when you consider that he, he managed, you know, JJ Delaney and whatnot in, in WIT. So, like, he's, he's, he's coaching off a lot of people. Like, he's been involved in the game an awful long time. 
as I said, he brings extensive experience and I think he'd be well respected in Tipperary. But I think it's a good appointment, yeah. I don't know what style of play it's going to be. or it, it, I mean, if it, do we automatically as, associate a single style or is it actually going to be a manager who comes in, looks at the threat of Limerick, looks at the available opportunity that he has with his players and tries to meld these two things together? Yeah, well, like... You know, again, I, like, I talk to an awful lot of people, let's say, of, of, you know, in, in hurling circles, like, and they're, they're on about, like, oh, if I was over a team, you know, if they were over the team, they, they would do this with them, but this and that to take on you know, the best teams. So, I, like, so if an inter-county manager is coming in, first of all, do you, do you have the players, like, do you, do you have the, the ingredients to go implement a game plan that's going to take on Limerick, you know? And if you do, like, you can take on Limerick up front, or, or, do you have to have, or do you have a group of players that need to play a certain style to suit them to get the most out of them? And that's kind of the... You know, it's this kind of 50-50 split. You think about Tipperary; they they play. They've always and forever have played a more traditional style, uh, whereas kind of like a 15 on 15, a bit like you know, Kenny would have done, Galway would have done, over and over. And that style now, nowadays has proven to be unsuccessful against Limerick. So, is he going to adopt that style and come towards more what I would class as a modern and contemporary type game, where it's possession based, it's minimal errors, you know, and it's creation space inside for your forwards? I think that's kind of the way they're going to have to go because they have again, I said about the ingredients. They have the ingredients in Tipperary where they've got serious pace. And they got great forward threats up there. And when you mix that with a good defensive system and good defence, like you can keep it tight at the back, and you can create space up front. So that they have what you would say the tangibles to create you know, a possession game that could probably take on Limerick. And it's only when we've seen you know Cork this year where they kind of they went away from from let's say you know, systems they would incorporate over the last number of years and went to a possession based game. And again in their first year, like and I know the, the final turned out to be hockey in the end, but. I, I think Cork make great steps, you know. They make great steps in trying to install the possession game. You know, stick with it, even though they make a, they make fundamental errors, they make a lot of errors, and keep going. And, you know, it takes a strong manager. So this, like, when you look at it, even whoever comes into Galway, and for Colin Bonner as well, it takes a strong manager to understand that if we implement a game plan, and let's say it's not successful in the league, to not abort or to not succumb to outside pressure because their game plan is not successful. You know, people are like Tipperary people and Galway people are like are, are, are very impatient. They want immediate success. So if they lose a league game, they want to win the next one. And you'd have an, a, a plethora of people outside of the setup that would want to change things back to a more traditional style that has been proven to win in years previous. But it might be, you know, the best game plan for for the future. So pressure will come on the management teams to implement their game style, stick with it, stick with it, and and see where it takes it throughout the course of this season, and next season. And he's got a three-year deal, so like, you know, the deal is desired, but. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can, I think he needs to be allowed to make mistakes. But. Yeah, and, and look, there is a, a, a slew of young players coming through as well, so it'll be exciting to see oh, yeah. what happens there. Did you expect yeah. the Galway situation to become vacant? Did you expect Shane O'Neill to step away after last year? Um, I, I did, to be honest. You know, I I, I didn't think he'd ever... Uh, being honest now, I, I thought he'd never be pushed out. You know what I mean? I thought he'd always go on his own terms. Um, you know, I, I do know, let's say, that a couple of the selectors would have, would have stepped away for family commitments kind of originally immediately after the Waterford game so because they've got young families and a plethora of kids um, so it was kind of left to himself and kind of John Fitz and, and Lucas and you know then <clears throat> the way things transpired I, I, I think just there was kind of a, a request for change in, in-house and I think Shane just probably stepped aside and said you know let someone else take up the mantle because we, we spoke recently about as well Ger, about whoever comes in is going to have to somewhat I won't say rejuvenate the team that's probably not the correct word, but he's going to have to integrate some new players, get them conditioned and get them ready for senior hurling along with the, the players that are there at the minute. So it is probably more of a task than probably, you know, are we going to be contenders next year? Yes, we'll always be contenders. You know, we, we will be. We're not going to be participants, but we'll always be contenders. But I, I, the more than Tipperary, I do think it's kind of a, a two-year process, you know what I mean? Probably three-year process before we can get back to, you know, a serious contenders and taking on and looking to expect to, to take on our finals against the likes of Limerick and whatnot. And yet they, it felt like they had certainly uh, driven this Limerick team to the pin of their collar at, at, in an All-Ireland final and it felt like they were built physically to take on Limerick. So why will it take so long, do you think, for the next manager? Or, or why are you asking for time for the next management team to be given to take on Limerick? Well, I, I'm being honest here now, OK? And you know, this might be, this might hurt some people's feelings in Galway, right? But what you have is in, in Limerick, and Limerick are the model now, and that's it. And we can we have to keep talking about Limerick because they're they're the standard bearers. They're like the Bayern Munich in Germany. Everyone's trying to take them down because they're the best. And that, that's just that's just the reality. Of it. And they're going to be the best in the near future because every player that comes into their panel, and we've only got we've only got a glimpse of a few of them now recently, are conditioned. 
And so what's and I'm and I, we spoke about before. They're, they're they're strong and they're really conditioned to take on senior hurlers. So like they can have all the skills in the world and they can have all the pace in the world, but if they're not strong and conditioned to be able to take on you know, basically a war of attrition nowadays in 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 hurling, they're not going to be able to make a, a positive impact onto the group. And so I'm looking at being honest, the last three hundred twenty groups, you know, they're not conditioned. So like we our three hundred twenty groups now have to get Lucas has to get his hands on them. That's and that's the most probably I I digress for a second. The most important thing for Galway in the very, very immediate, in my opinion, is to nail down Lucas, our SNC coach. Give him what he wants, put it on three year terms and give the, give him access to all the players so he can take them and condition them forward into senior. Because right now I see an awful lot of twenties coming through and they're just not conditioned. They're lovely hurlers, they're stylish, you know, they've all the silky skill that we 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 can associate with minor three run teams for 20, 30 years in Galway, but they are not conditioned like you see what the Limit has coming through. Look at the twenty final against Cork. And I couldn't. I was astounded to be honest, sir, when I saw the, the 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 gap in physicality and size from the Cork players to the Galway players. You know, and like yes, we can challenge. You know, for you know for probably the majority of the games, but we we can't really overtake the likes of you know, Cork and Limerick without having put in serious condition in. That's why I say whoever comes in management wise needs to be allowed a bit of time to get these players conditioned. It takes eighteen months. You can be fish in a few weeks. You know, you can be fish, lung fish, uh, robotly fish in probably six to eight weeks, you know what I mean? But to get a strength base and be conditioned to take on the heat of hurling for, you know, for a prolonged period of six to eight months takes a year, takes two years. And that's why you see Kyle Hayes, Jimmy Burns, Keen Lynch. And like, these guys aren't perfect. They're in their low 20s. So they've been conditioned since they were literally 16 up to when they got the earned education senior panel. That's the most important thing from Galway's perspective. Do you get the sense that there is an overarching plan and a structure and that actually everybody in Galway Hurling understands that if you work collaboratively, you're going to get to the point where you've got the raw materials to be one of the dominant forces? Or is it still kind of, uh, let's go with this guy now and see what he wants to do, and then the next guy comes along and he's the messiah, and the next guy comes along and, okay, this is what we're doing? Yeah, uh, you saw like your your question basically, are Galway reactive or are they proactive? Um, and like... I, for me, I have to say we're very reactive. To be honest, I I don't think three things like I, remember I spoke about Limerick with the Ireland. What what you need to you know, for for the for the portion of success. Though. So like you need all the clubs aligned together. You need all the players who are in symmetry with their management. You know you need financial backing that's going to be able to challenge the, the you know the big counties. You know you need structures in place to to for the players. You know for them to to um to really thrive. And like when you look at Galway, and first of all it was a sin that we ever let me. I don't know go. You know like the. A manager like we we don't win our Ireland's you know every year we've won five our Ireland's in our history you know there's been three managers in the history of Galway that have won our Ireland's and then when we get one that's win, one that wins one in the most recent history we let them go you know we let them go and like that that was a travesty in, in my opinion you know what I mean because what he had was he had uh, a he had huge, huge respect by the players huge respect and he had the great ability to man manage everyone you know what I mean and then also be Near like your friend slash father figure, if you know what I mean, off the pitch, which was a great balance. There was you, you were afraid to cross him, do you know what I mean? But you could always go to him if you're an issue. And then I just think that whoever comes in has to have that same trait again. In Galway, I think the clubs dominate. I think it's club first, county second, in my opinion. Um, I've never, and like, I'm only, I'm 33, so really, me looking at it from the outside in or inside out, should I say, I'm probably 15 years looking at it, and I've always seen that the clubs will dominate decision making first. So if that's club structure, if fixtures, whatever it is, that's always going to be the way it is in Galway. I don't think everyone's on the same page, whether that be on board, player, management, club level. I, I've never seen it, you know what I mean? And like, for, that's what's so frustrating because we have all the talent and ability in the world that if we just all got on the same page, everyone, clubs, board, players alike, and you know, if we could, I suppose, help each other out. Now, that's a broader to topic that I can get into some other day, but if we could just all help each other out, and not be pulling opposite ways like a tug of war. No, we'll challenge everyone, no problem. But again, history shows we don't. That's why we only five other Ireland. <clears throat> it feels from the outside like you're in some kind of hurling purgatory where you, the sins of someone along the way were so grave that for whatever reason, the, the countless brilliant youth teams that come through, the, the minor teams that we would have watched in all Ireland final day constantly as the precursor, and then the under-21 teams, and then the amazing club teams that come through, all this yeah. talent. And it's like, this guy's the next superstar this guy's the next superstar, this guy's the next superstar, and for whatever yeah. reason, something happens and the team falls away, or maybe yeah. it is. Maybe the conditioning is, is actually, has always been an issue, I don't know, but I'm very interested to see, like, that you're saying, you kind of feel the same, that there's something 
lacking, some kind of central leadership has been incapable of bringing everybody together. Listen to me, <clears throat> I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying that fully out straight to you. It's 100% a central system. Like, so I always say, if you're the managing director of a company, you know what I mean? Whatever decisions or actions are done by your staff is, is the directive of the managing director. So it's, it's his kind of, his direction, his, his, his vision, you know, his way of working is what everybody else kind of tries to employ. You know what I mean? And like I say, it's the same thing in, in, in hurling circles and like you're at board level, whoever's the main dog, right? If he's implementing a ca a a academy structures and good fixture plan, let's say for clubs and everybody's thriving, you know what I mean? It, it's, 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 it's a breeding ground for success, but you've got so many different fractions and you've got this guy o over this part, you know, and he's not really talking to this lad over here. And it's just, you know, it's so broken. Like, and there's no real collective thinking. It's very, very individualistic, I think, in Galway, you know. I, I was talking to my brother-in-law last night and he was telling me that he's coaching rugby in the schools around kind of Loch Grey and around this area. And I was just thinking, geez, I don't like, I, who's who's coaching hurling in our schools? Like, you know, and I was just thinking that there should be a fundamental plan put in at youth level, at the very, very basis to capture youth. Yes, they're doing the clubs, but to capture kids who are anything from, from eight up to 16 and to hold them and get them kind of obsessed with hurling like I was as a child and to keep them going because how many people are you going to be losing to different sports? Like there's, we have a couple of, Guys who run a minor team now, they're lost, really good players from like Savannah So, a club who wouldn't be dominant and they're lost to rugby now. I mean, why couldn't we capture those you know, either in an academy structure or something like that to, to keep them going? And I just think there's not collective thinking in Galway. And until we come on board and collectively think as one, as one, we're not going to be able to challenge every single year. Like we expect to win every year. I don't know why we expect to win every year because we don't. We have five at Ireland in 125 years. You know what I mean? So I don't know what. Like people think about that, a minor and an under 20 with the greatest respect now, and Jerlock Nan used this phrase before, they're dancing medals in comparison to the senior alert. Do you know what I mean? We all have, I'd say if you count up the minors and 20s in, our, in, in, in Galway, <clears throat> you'll hit a couple of thousand. Do you know what I mean? But you count up the seniors, you, know, you won't get past 100. Do you know what I mean? So like that's, that's the design of it. And it, it sounds like harsh talk, but it's, it's real talk, sure. Do you know what I mean? And until we can fix that and get real structures in place from academy right up, from strength of, position and, strength of position and skills, we're going to be always on the outside, I think. See, you, you talk about Michal Dunhu there. If if he was interested, the county board, it sounds like, should be going on bended knee to try and get him back. Go down <clears throat> with a bouquet of flowers, go to his door and say, come on, come back, please. Like I would, I personally speaking, um, even though I've known about with the team, I would love to see him back because I know how good he is. Um, I know how well respected he is in, in management terms and how well got he is around amongst you know, supporters and the way he's able to capture them, let's say, in, in 17 and 18. So even though we didn't win in 18, but he's a great manager. And I just think it's a bloody sin if we don't go about and getting the best manager possible with this group. And in my opinion, that's me. Whether he'll do it or not with a young family, I'm not sure. Do you know what I mean? How his position is in his professional life, I don't know. But I think every effort anyway, honestly, should be made to bring him back. OK, the, the other contenders who have been mentioned, Davy Fitz is obviously the, the, the standout name in terms of um, track record and, and fame. What what would Davy Fitz managing Galway look like? Uh, it's, it's kind of an image like, I, you know, I, I suppose I've been forced to imagine it over the last <clears throat> 10 days. You know what I mean? but I, I just, it just doesn't fit with Galway. You know, I think when he went to Wexford, I think the county as a whole were, were, were looking for a bit of rejuvenation. I think the... Probably the team were looking for a level of professionalism and management that they might have seen before, and he brings those two things with him. You know, as I said as earlier on in this, I don't think Galway are in need of a rejuvenation. I think they're in need of a collective approach. That's why I went for somebody in-house who, who has the knowledge of basically everyone in the county. And, you know, I just think that he, they need to gain the respect. And there are certain ways, uh, certain counties have certain, you know, principles and ethos. You know, I think... Always kind of ethos that say if when you're when you're in there is kind of a real collective approach, <clears throat> a real kind of shared responsibility between management and players, how they're going to, you know, develop a game plan and develop a system and come together, find out the bad parts, you know, share share their own thoughts, debate it, and then go in one direction. And I just think that's that's kind of not really in the David Fitz model, in my opinion. And um, so that's why I would, I'd be going for someone in house to try and do that. Like I don't think the Galway players <clears throat> um, would take, you know dictatorship too handy you know what I mean uh, it's just and it's just it's just the persona maybe something in, in within the west I know Anthony Daly wrote an article a couple of years ago saying that we were a strange bunch you know what I mean uh, the Gaul people were a strange bunch and he couldn't put his finger on us like so 
maybe that's the part to play in a tool. Was that was, was was Delo saying that in an admiring way or was it in a confounding way that actually it was, it was at the time it was actually at the time where, where whereby Shane O'Neill hadn't been nominated and, and Michal had stepped down um with all the furrow with the board and whatnot. And then there was that kind of purgatory period of whereby there was you know a few weeks, I don't know, maybe five, six weeks, I don't know, um, of where we we're kind of searching for a manager and there was a collective approach between board representatives and players to try and find the best candidate. And that's when the article was released and he kind of was saying that, you know, I think, he, I don't know, maybe I'm, I, the specifics wrong here, but he said that he was approached by an officer of the board, let's say, before Michael had even stepped down, you know, which was which doesn't surprise me. Um, and like, you know, that the kind of, it was an odd bunch that there was no real collective thinking in Galway. Again, a sim- along similar lines to what I was saying a few minutes ago. Yeah, it, and sounds, like probably, it sounds like you kind of agree I, with them in, in a way. Yeah, it's, look, again, and I said to you, it's harsh and it might offend people. I don't want to offend anyone. Like, like when I'm talking about these these people, I'm not aiming this personally at people. I am just saying it's a business, and that's the way you have to think of the the county teams nowadays and boards at whole level. Like it's a business that needs to be managed managed correctly, you know. So I'm not attacking someone's personal views or their or their personal their personal life. I, I what I'd be going after is is their is their capabilities to manage something so large. Like you, you're talking about a board now, uh, or sorry, a county that that is operating in the millions in terms of turnover. Like you know, so you're not just talking about some lad who can you can pluck out of a sitting room and put him into a you know, into a management role. You need someone who is strategic, who has a broad plan. You know what I mean? That's where you see all the terminology coming out of these counties now for their, you know, their, their plans and their, their, their Limerick put in a plan if, eight years ago with their, their academy. And now people are scratching their head how this is so good. Yeah. So Jesus, like, you know what I mean? Like, they put the plans in place, you know, uh, years ago, and now they're getting the fruition of those plans. And I would love to see that go away. I would love to see a concrete plan, a document developed that every club can follow. Every person knows it's a it's a uniform document. It's a central document that we could all, you know, strive toward. You know what I mean? And like that's there's, there's so many brains in Galway like that. There's great people in Galway that could do all this, whether they're in the business capacity or sporting capacity. And you know, I just I would hate to see those lost to other areas, you know, or, or other other counties even. You know? Or, yeah, or other sports as, as the examples you give. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, well, we're we're nearly out of, of time on this. It, like it doesn't sound like Michal Donahue is going to come back. That the, your instinct is that he probably is too busy at the moment which will actually yeah. leave open the possibility of everything that you've said that one of the one of the easy fixes the manager on the shelf break glass in case of emergency it might feel a bit like an emergency is, is it more or less likely that Davy Fitz despite what you've said will actually end up as the Galway manager again I, f- I find it hard to believe um, like I, I would I would strongly ma- imagine that that the Galway players would be consulted you know on, on who would be at least consulted I'm not saying they're going to be decision makers but at least be consulted because we like all players, we've been involved in, you know, our, our own share of, of, of what people call controversies when you go back to the entity currently and thing. But they were proven right. You know what I mean? The goal players back then were proven right. As much as people didn't like it. And maybe it's a generational thing too, Ger, whereby people beyond their 40s and 50s don't like, they, they call this player power. It's not. It's not player power. Like, in, in years previous, you could call it that. But nowadays, like, you're talking to very, very intelligent people who have a, a really strong opinion and who've lived this life, let's say, in terms of pain, and they can see... You know that when standards aren't set at a very high level, they, they can call it out. So that's not really player power. You know what I mean? That's just a realization that the setup's not good enough. So when you go back to the the, the whole anti-corruption situation, you know it was it was extremely important that we came together as a group and we got change. When we got change, we got an Ireland. You know what I mean? So that's important nowadays too. So I think the players should be consulted, and I just don't think he fits the bill. If I'm honest, you know, and if the players themselves, <clears throat> if they decide collectively he does fit the bill, well, then I'll back him. I'll back him 100%, even though I'm not his greatest fan in the way he operates his business. Again, nothing personal against him. It's just the way he operates his own structure and management. But if the players back him, I'll back him. But again, I just can't see it. I just, I just cannot see how we go to him. And again, financially speaking, his setups come with a, you know, with 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 a price tag. And that's even though it's not spoken about, it's not spoken about, not written about in in correct ink or black ink. It is, it's a reality, and we know it, and I know it, and you know it. That uh, it'll come in a price tag. It'll come in a lot of a lot of effort to try and keep you know those people paid. That's the fact. Yeah. Can, can, okay. Are there other people then who are obvious candidates apart from the the ones that we've talked about, Mihal and and Debbie Fitz? Is there somebody else that you're thinking now's the time? It, it's your time right now to take this group and mould them over the next two or three years. Yeah. Well, like there's I, I have wishful there's, wish, there's wishful candidates and there's actual candidates. You know, actual candidates. There's five or six. Of them. You know what I mean that I like that I. You know, to get it, to get it. You know, that kind of way. Wishful candidates for me. And I know, like, and he, he shook me for this because, like, he's one of my best friends. But there's a guy, Damien Joyce, Pedro Goy, like, 
And the minute, the minute you say his name, I guarantee every every player in Galway will know it. Usually respected, and he's got a great brain. But I do know, let's say, from a family perspective, from a work perspective, time might not suit. You know, that's my wish. <clears throat> I would love to see him. I'd love to see Noel Larkin back in McGovic to see what he brings to it. I'd love to see the likes of Franny Ford. Sorrel Donnan was a great, like, is a great mind. You know what I mean? For such a young age, he's only 35, 36, but he's got a great mind. And, you know what I mean? And those those three or four guys collectively, I know you're bringing back members of the 17 team. You know what I mean? But again... Well, it does strike me. It does strike me that that's a very recent, successful All-Ireland winning yeah. side. And if you look yeah. around the country, the age profile of management teams are getting younger and younger and younger. And so why not? Why wouldn't your group decide yeah. it's our time now it's now or never listening to Andy Moran on the, on the football pod Andy's like I'm 37, 38 it's either now or never I'm like well actually you've got another 40 years there Andy where your brain is going to get bigger and bigger when it comes to tactics and stuff yeah. but like that that chutzpah is right there for you guys now if you wanted to yeah. go and take it it is like you've got great brains and that, I just said Jamie and Joyce because I know him I know him the best over the lot of them you know but there are those people across the clubs there's numerous people across the clubs that just need to be enticed out you know what I mean I think there's probably uh, there's a small bit of snobbery too in Galway about whereby oh they have to come to us to put their name forward. Do you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than we go we, we go get them. Do you know what I mean? So like I I, I that's just I don't know I, I can't explain why that it's, is. It's not just Galway. Way. It's it's uh, it's Irish life. It's Irish it's life. Like we, yeah. Or oh, he has to come to us. He has to come to us. Like we can't let we can never succumb and go to him. You know. Whereas I be up front, put your hand up and say right. I want that guy. I want that guy. Do you know what I mean? Let's go get him. Do you know what I mean? So. Like, again, you've got Jaycee. You've got Cahill Murray's doing well with the Camogie team. They're in the final on Sunday. Don't get me started on that now with the fixtures clashing with the Camogie, right? Um, and, like, you've got really good people. Brian Henning did well with the mind, you know. So you've got Dave Morris is a fantastic brain. He comes from a football background, but is probably the best brain I have ever met in, in sporting terms. Do you know what I mean? And, like, these people are out there. Just go get them. Okay. All right, it's a very interesting period of time where all of these jobs are up for grabs and still we have Limerick over on that side. But Limerick did lose their um, strength and conditioning guy to Ulster Rugby, so maybe yeah. there's just a little chink of life for everybody else out there. Always great having you on. Thanks a million for joining us this morning, James. Cheers. Okay, it's uh, always fascinating listening to um, James Scahill, who himself has a, a giant hurling brain. It's 18 minutes past nine this morning here on OTBAM, brought to you by Gillette. Good morning. Start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razor.